Please go to elithecomputerguy.com and failednormal.com to see the videos that are too dangerous for YouTube. Welcome back. Are you ready to do something vaguely useful today? Today's project, we're going to be using fans, we're going to be using LED lights, we're going to use an analog temperature sensor, an L298 motor module, an Arduino board, all to create something that might actually be useful in the real world. Now again, for technology professionals, one of the big things that we have to deal with is the environment of our equipment, making sure the temperature is at the right level, humidity is at the right level, so on and so forth. And so one of the cool things that you can do with Arduino boards is you can create uh, basically environmental sensors. Sensors to detect the humidity, sensors to detect the temperature, so on and so forth. Uh, and with that information, you can then uh, alert users or yourself that there's a problem. So you can use LED lights to basically show whether the condition's green or whether the condition's red. You can use an LCD screen in order to explain things a little bit better. You can even use and network or Wi-Fi shields to be able to send information out to a server. But in this modern world, we don't just want to be notified that there's a problem. We want our automated systems to try to do something about it. So what's going to happen today in this project is we're going to have the Arduino. And on the Arduino, we're going to have our analog temperature sensor. And what this analog temperature sensor is going to do is it's going to determine what the temperature is. Now, if the temperature is below a certain level, so I think what if we set it at, at below 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So if it's below 73 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to have an LED light, a green LED light that is going to be lit up. So if it's below 73 degrees, the green LED is going to be lit up. But if it gets above 73 degrees, but below 80, so let's say oh, a temperature that we might want to be concerned about. At that point, a yellow LED is going to turn on and one fan, one 12 volt fan is also going to turn on. So the idea is a room for some reason is becoming a little warmer than it should. It's not, it's not emergency conditions, but eh, that's a little bit warm. Again, maybe the air conditioning filter hasn't been replaced in a little bit too long. Maybe just the temperature outside is way too hot and that's causing problems inside the building. Basically, you're just at that point where eh, it's not, it's probably not a danger. Nothing's probably going to start shutting down at that temperature. But if you, if you can cool down the environment, that would probably be a good idea. So what we're going to do is one LED light is going to turn on and then one 12 volt fan is going to turn on to try to bring some circulation into the environment. But then what happens? And then what happens if for whatever reason, the temperature keeps going up, it goes above 80 degrees. That might be a time when you really start getting concerned about uh, possibly equipment shutting shutting down, that type of thing. So what's going to happen at that point is a red LED is going to turn on. And then the second fan, so we're going to have a second 12 volt fan also turn on. The idea here is basically now it's trying to pull even more air through that room, through that environment, basically in an emergency condition of trying to cool that room down if at all possible. So what's going to be happening here is we're going to have a sensor to detect the temperature. We're then going to be alerted uh, off of what the temperature is. Again, is it green? Is it yellow? Is it red? So that we have a visual cue that something's going on. But then also, this is going to trigger a physical event to happen. So when we get to that yellow, when it goes above 73 degrees, we're going to have a single fan turn on. And then if it goes above 80 degrees, we're going to have the second fan turn on. And this shows you how you can start thinking about how you want physical actions to be triggered. Again, not simply that you notify there if it's, hey, look, there's a problem. Great, right? Being told that there's a problem <laughs> doesn't do anything. It just tells you that there's a problem, right? One of the things you need to start thinking about is how can you start trying to solve the problem using your automated systems? So with that, let's go over to the workbench. I'll show you how this little project is put together, and then I'll show you the code, and then we'll show you how it all works when everything is done.
So here is the project assembled. Uh, what you'll notice is we have these two uh, 200 millimeter uh, PC fans here. So one of the things you have to think about whenever you're building projects with motors, whether they're fans or water pumps or wheels or whatever else, one of the things you have to think about is how are you going to be powering the motors? What I've decided to do for this particular project is we're actually using a nine volt uh, one amp power supply here. And so this will be plugged into the Arduino board. The Arduino's VIN Pen, so the VIN pen will then send the uh, electricity down to the L298N module and that will then power these fans. And that's something that you have to be thinking about with these projects. Again, these may seem like very wimpy fans and compared to a lot of fans, they are, they're, they are, but I don't need a whole hell of a lot of power to actually be able to power these things. And so that's something you have to think about. If you want a much more powerful box fan that could circulate a lot more air, then you're going to be thinking about how to power that off of a motor module or off of a relay. So this is just one of those things that you have to be thinking about is again, it's not just simply what you want to have happen, but again, how, how you're gonna power it and how everything is gonna get built. But anyways, so we've got our two uh, 200 millimeter fans here. We of course have our L298N uh, motor module here. We have our Arduino board, and then we have our little breadboard. In the breadboard, we have our analog uh, temperature sensor here. We have a green LED, we have a yellow LED, and we have the red LED. Um, and all of this is set up, basically this is set up the, the standard way you configure all this. Uh, we just have added multiple projects together. So uh, with the LEDs, we have the 220 ohm resistor. We have these connected up. So these go to the digital ports on the Arduino board. So digital ports two, three, and four, those are going to be powering the LEDs. So those are gonna turn on the LEDs when they're triggered. Uh, for the temperature sensor, that's going to go to analog zero. So A0, that's gonna to go to for the temperature sensor. As far as the L29, 8N module for the speed. So again, when you're talking about ENA or ENB, those pins control the speed. So those correspond to digital pin six and digital pin seven on the Arduino board. And then to actually control the, the power pins on the L298 in a module, then we're gonna be using digital pins eight, nine, 10, and 11 to control those. And so this, this is how it all looks once you've built everything. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the code. So here's the code for the project. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define the temperature sensor, the temperature pin. Uh, so pound define temp sensor, and that's going to go to A0. So that's the temperature sensor output. It's an analog sensor, so it goes to A0. Then we're going to define the LED pin. So green LED is going to be two, yellow is gonna be three, red is going to be four. Then we're going to define the speed pins. So this is the speed for, for the motors off of the L298N module. So ENA is for digital pin six, ENB digital pin seven. Then for the first motor, IN1 and IN2. So we're going to assign those to pin eight and pin nine. And then for the second motor, IN3 and IN4, we're going to assign those to pin 10 and pin 11. Finally, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to set the good and high temperatures as a variable. So many times when I deal with the temperature sensors, I just hard code the temperature into the code. So 73, 80, whatever else. I actually code that into the if else statements down here. What I'm going to do for this particular project is I'm actually just going to make those variables and then set the values for the variables up here. So we're gonna create an int variable, good temp equals 73. So essentially what we're looking at is 73 and below is good. Then we're going to create a variable int high temp equals 80. So 80 and above equals bad. And then we will use the values of these variables for our if else statements. Then we're going to go down and we're going to use the pin mode function to turn on all those digital pins. So green LED, yellow LED, ENA, ENB, IN1, IN2, so on and so forth. We have to turn on all those digital pins and set them to output. The next thing that we're going to do here is we are going to do analog write. So in the environmental setup, we are also able to set the speed of the motors. And so since I'm not going to be changing the speed within the loop, I'm just going to set the speed here. And so analog right, ENA 255. So ENA, that motor should be at the highest speed. Analog right, ENB 255. So ENB should be at the highest speed. 
Then we're gonna go down and we're gonna do serial.begin 9600. So this starts the serial monitor so that we can actually look at the readouts uh, from the analog temperature sensor and make sure everything is being triggered when it should be triggered and that closes out the environment. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here and we are just gonna plug in all of this information that's required in order to deal with temperatures. So this is int reading, you know, analog read from the temperature sensor, float voltage equals reading times five, voltage uh, divided by 1024 equals itself, float temperature C equals voltage minus 0.5 times 100, float temperature F equals temperature C times nine divided by five plus 32. So so this is just, this has to be written in basically anytime you're gonna be using that analog temperature sensor. Then past that, we're going to go down here and we are going to print out to the serial monitor again so that we can see what is going on. Make, make sure our fans and our LEDs are triggering when they're supposed to be triggered. Serial.print the voltage, serial.print the temperature C, serial.print the temperature F. So for Fahrenheit. And so this is just printing out those temperatures so that we can visually make sure everything is working how it's supposed to. And then we get down to the meat of the code, actually turning on the LEDs and turning on and off the motors. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna say if the temperature is too high. So if the temperature is above 80, we want these things to happen. So to do that, we're gonna say is if temperature F is greater to or equal to the value of the variable high temp. If we go up here, the variable high temp is 80. So if, if the temperature Fahrenheit is greater to or equal than 80, then digital right LED, we're gonna set that to high. We're gonna turn on the red LED. Digital right yellow LED, low, off. Green LED, low, off. Then what we're gonna do is now we're gonna turn on both fans. So if it's a red condition, if it's above 80 degrees, we want both fans to be on to try to cool down that room or that environment. So with this, IN1 is high, IN2 is low. So remember, these are sets, these are pairs. So whenever we set the pair, one has to be high, one has to be on, one has to be off. High means that's the positive power, low means that's the ground. So, you, so in order to have a circuit, you always need positive and ground. So one's high, one's low, and since both fans have to be on, then IN3 is also high and IN4 is low. So this turns both fans on. Else if, else if temperature Fahrenheit, temperature F is greater than or equal good temp, so if it's 73 degrees um, or above, and temperature F is less than high temp, so it's less than 80 degrees, then I, I want this thing to happen. So this is that yellow condition. It's above the temperature for green, and but, but still below the temperature for red. Then we're gonna turn the red LED off, red LED low, yellow LED high, turns the yellow LED on, green LED low, off. Then what we're going to do is we're only going to turn on one fan. So we're only gonna use one set of these IN pins. So IN1 goes to high, IN2 goes to low. And what that does is that turns on one fan. And then what we can see here is IN3 and IN4 are both low. So that means that fan is off. Then we go down here to else. Uh, so basically, it's not too high, it's not in the middle, so that means it's green, it's good. Digital right, red LED is off, yellow LED is off, low. Green LED is high, so we've turned on the green LED to say, say everything is good. And then as far as all those IN pins, they are all set to low because that turns all the fans off. If the temperature is good, then there's no reason to have any fans on. Then past that, we simply go down and we have a delay of a thousand milliseconds or one second. And again, I, I put in that kind of delay just, to, just as a way to, to, to make it a little easier to read things like the serial monitor. But that delay there is something that you should be considering if you put this into something like production environment of if you don't want the fans constantly turning on and off. Now imagine, imagine that the temperature inside the environment gets a little warm. So the fan turns on, which then cools the environment by like 0.1 degrees, not an, even an entire degree, by 0.1 degrees. Well, remember, if it's, if, it's that, if it's under a threshold by 0.1, that's still below the threshold. So that would turn the fan off. And then the environment would get warm again. We get warm within like, you know, a couple of seconds. And so then it would turn the fan on. 
But then when the fan turns on, then the environment would cool by 0.1 degrees. And so it would turn off and then it would turn on and turn off and turn on and turn off and turn on and turn off, right? So every time the fan turns on, it cools. So it goes below a threshold then that turns the fan off. And then, so that's one thing you might think about with this delay. I mean, like really with a delay, you might put this at uh, 10,000 milliseconds. So 10,000 milliseconds would be uh, 10 seconds. You might put it at 60,000 milliseconds. That would be a full minute. You know, maybe 600,000 milliseconds, that would be 10 minutes. So basically, uh, it stops, it, it waits to read the temperature. If the temperature is above a certain level, then it would turn the fan on for 10 minutes. You know, those are the kinds of things that you have to be thinking about is how fast do you want this system to respond? Do you want it turning on and off rapidly? That's just one of those things you have to ponder. So with that, let's go over back over to the workbench and I can show you how this thing works once all the code has been uh, uploaded to it and it's all been set up. So here's the project as it's been built and the code has now been uploaded. One thing to remember when you're thinking about powering these Arduino projects is remember that the USB connection provides five volts and so it can power some things for your Arduino uh, projects, but not necessarily others. So what you can see is you can see the LED is actually lit up right now. And so the USB is able to power the analog sensor and the LED. But if we started to try to trigger this to turn on the fans, the fans would not have enough power to turn Turn on. So that's why we need the external power supply for this. So this is a 9 volt 1 amp power supply. I'm going to take this, I'm going to plug this into an extension cord. Now I'll plug this into the Arduino board. And so with this now, this will give enough power to actually be able to power the fans. Now it is important to understand with this particular project is I'm going to keep this connected to the computer because we're going to use the serial monitor to make sure everything is being triggered when it's supposed to be triggered. But do realize if I don't need the serial monitor at this point, I could unplug the USB, completely disconnect this from a computer and take this whole project and mount it into a wall, mount it somewhere. And then I wouldn't need any kind of computer interface. Once the code has been uploaded, that code will run without any other computer attached. So with that, let's go over to a split screen so I, so I can show you the serial monitor as we go through and we trigger the different things to happen. So let's go up, we go to tools, we go to serial monitor and we take a look at what temperature this is currently reading. So what we can see here, the important one for us is degrees Fahrenheit. So we can see it's 67.68 degrees Fahrenheit. And with that, we see the green LED is on and both fans are off. So what we're gonna do is I'm just simply going to put my fingers on the temperature sensor that's raising the temperature. It goes up to 74 degrees. You now see the yellow LED is on and a single fan is also on. As it then goes up to 80 degrees, what we'll see is both fans are now on and the red LED is on. So the red LED is on to tell you as the user, hey, there's a problem. But for this system, not only is it going to tell you there's a problem, but it's also going to try to do something about it. Then what you can see, if something gets better, you clean out the air filter, whatever else, the, the room gets cooler for some reason. If I take my fingers off of the temperature sensor, the temperature starts going down. Again, now, since it's below 80 degrees, the yellow light is on. One of the fans has turned off. It keeps going down to 75 to 74. And what we'll see is once we hit uh, below 73 degrees, then the green light has now turned on. And what we can see is that this fan has turned off. So this is a completely automated system. Not only is it turning LEDs on and off, but it's also turning these fans on and off uh, to try to help mitigate any problems with the situation that you're dealing with. And so that was just a basic project to show you how an Arduino can notify you that there's a problem and it can actually also trigger physical events to happen. Again, something like turning on a fan. Now, a lot of people out there, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. They look at little Arduinos and they go, ah, why? Eli, why are you teaching Arduinos? Why are you talking about an Arduino? Why aren't you talking about real technology? And I just want to lose my mind. I just want to lose my mind. Because back when I had my company, back when we were dealing with small clients, back when I was in the enterprise world, let me tell you, one of the biggest problems we had were server rooms. 
right? Now, don't get me wrong. Some of our server rooms were amazing. Some of our server rooms had dedicated HVAC systems and raised floors, and they were beautiful. They were up to spec. Um, but I have to say, a lot of server rooms I dealt with were literal broom closets, literal broom closets. And again, you, you, you put some servers in there, most of the time they're working okay, but like here in the, in the Baltimore area, it gets to be 100 degrees outside. The, uh, the HVAC, the air conditioning unit for the entire building, is having a hard time keeping up. Those servers, that room starts getting warmer and warmer and warmer, and all of a sudden you start having thermal events, um, and you realize you know, that, that can be a real major problem. Again, like with uh, when you have broom closets, one of the big problems is, uh, you know, I, I would have clients who would use broom closets for whatever reason as their server room. There wasn't a whole lot I could do about it. But the one thing I would say is just keep the door open. Just keep the door cracked and I'll, I'll walk away. I'll walk, ah, just, just keep it cracked and, and fine. The systems will be cool enough. But then again, like in all seriousness, then you have an employee walk by, go, wow, why is this door open? They close the door, thermal events, server shutting down, it's bad. And again, right? So one of the things to be thinking about in that type of environment is you sit there and you go, okay, well, how can I deal with this? You know what I can do in all seriousness is I can cut, I can cut, you know, a, a, a hole in the drywall at the top of the, 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 the broom closet. I can cut a hole at the bottom of the broom closet put a couple of vents there, right? At that top vent, I can add a fan or two. I can add one of these Arduinos with the analog sensor, and then if the temperature goes above a certain level, then you can have those top fans, then try to pull the air out. That circulates air from the bottom, and then maybe you don't have servers crashing. So this really is an important thing, again, in the IT and the tech world. Environmental monitoring and trying to mitigate environmental problems is a huge deal. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why if, if I had known about these, if I had known about these like 13, 14 years ago, I would have been all over it. I'm not really sure when they were developed, but I didn't use them back in the day, but I definitely would use them now. So anyways, as always, I enjoy doing this video and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.